Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. If you're not a regular here, if you've been drawn in today by the question and the obscene price tag on the thumbnail, a special hello just for you. My name is Jody. I would love this to become regular. I would love it if you would subscribe to the channel by hitting the big button that says subscribe on it. On my wrist for review today, I have a Rolex GMT Master II two-tone in Everose Gold, more commonly known as the Root Beer. Now, this one is the new king. It is the most expensive watch that I have ever looked at on the channel, coming in at 20,850 Australian dollars. Now, most of the watches that I review here are under 800 Aussie, and I've reviewed plenty for less than a 50, so this one had better be good. Needless to say, it doesn't belong to me. If there's a Rolex on the channel, chances are it belongs to my mysterious friend, Mr. X. A big shout out to him. You can give him a follow on Instagram at the real Mr. X Sydney. I'll leave a link to his Insta in the description of the video. Now, can I just say, this watch is sensational. It's pretty fantastic and I would love to own it. But that's not the point today. That's not the question to be answered. The question to be answered is, is it worth $20,000? And I'm gonna to attempt to answer that question not once, not twice, but three times. Twice in the intro and once in the review. You following? If you are, then chances are you're the only one doing so. All right then, let's crack on. I'll ask it for the first time. Is this watch worth $20,000? And my first answer is no, it is not worth $20,000. It's worth about $25,000. If you look on Chrono24, there are plenty of them, somewhat optimistically priced, shall we say, at $28,000, down to about 25,000 Aussie. I'm fairly confident I could sell this one locally today for 25 Gs. That is the madness surrounding Rolex as a brand at the moment. If you manage to leave a Rolex AD with pretty much anything other than a two-tone date just on your wrist, you can flip it for a profit the next day. You will obviously upset the lizard men in Switzerland and you will burn a bridge with your AD. There are rumors of spies on Facebook groups, on forums, trying to match up sales with flips, so do be warned. But but there you go. The answer to the question the first time, is it worth 20 grand, is no, it's probably worth 25 grand. So I'll ask it again then. Is it worth 20 grand? Well, clearly, yes, economically it is. Regardless of what I go on to say during the rest of this video, if you can buy something for $20,850 and sell it for a profit the next day, then it's worth 20,000. But I'm gonna ask this question for a third time. I'm gonna ask, is this watch materially worth $20,000. Does it have the engineering? Does it have the design? Does it have the fit and finish to justify the price tag? And that, I suspect, is going to be a little trickier to answer. Let's flip the camera and get on with it. Okay, so I'm going to get this watch out of the box, having just put it back in the box, obviously. And I'm going to run you through, first of all, the basic dimensions, the specifications. I'm going to get on the time grapher. I'm going to show you a loom video, and we're all going to ooh and ah about how beautiful this watch is. But then I'm going to show you three things that I don't think are up to snuff on a 20 grand watch. This is not the first GMT Master 2 that I've looked at on the channel this year. I reviewed the Bat Person, courtesy of the guy over at Clockbait in London earlier on this year and their watch had a couple of issues that this one has so I reckon it's consistent across this GMT Master 2 range. Now when I reviewed that watch the Clockbait back person there were a number of people who were like oh it's a fake it's a fake it's not a real Rolex real Rolexes don't have those quality control issues this is not a fake. Mr. X does not buy fake watches. He buys all of his rollers from the same dealer in the UK. I have been there myself. They are not fake watches. This comes with all the papers necessary. It also comes with the hang tags there. So let me assure you, this is not a fake watch. There is, of course, an alternative possibility, and that is that Rolex allows these things to get out of the factory and to be sold to customers for $20,850 with issues that wouldn't be acceptable if it was another brand at this price. But that will all come a little later on. Let's start with a liberal dose of ooing and eyeing because that is gorgeous. Rolex GMT Master 2, I'm not sure what else I would personally want from a watch that this one doesn't offer. Perfect size, shape, weight, fit. 
GMT functionality. You've got a Cyclops over the date there. And this one in two tone rose gold, 18 karat rose gold has got a little bit of the baller about it, doesn't it? Now I have reviewed one of Mr. X's two tone subs before in 18 karat regular gold. This, believe it or not, you might think the rose gold is gonna be even flashier. It's not, it's a bit more discreet. And that bezel insert is absolutely stunning. The nicest bezel insert that I've seen on any watch, but as this is the most expensive watch that I've reviewed, it should be. I'm sure you'll all be familiar with the set of dimensions that I'm about to give you. 40 mil in diameter, 48 lug to lug, a smidge over 12 mil thick, 20 millimeter lug width, tapering down to about 15 and a half, back up to just under 18 at the clasp. Sized up for me, this one weighs in at 165 grams. So just a little bit more than a regular sub or GMT would. I'm guessing that the precious metal is a bit heavier than the 904L Oyster Steel that Rolex use in this and all of their watches. Now 904 is a little bit softer than 316L, so it will scuff and scratch more easily. It is a little bit more corrosion resistant and it is a little bit easier to polish those scuffs and scratches out should you choose to we have a piece of dead flat sapphire crystal covering the dial no anti-reflective coating so you pay all that money but rolex you know traditionally does not put anti-reflective coating on their sports watches and this one is no different so the bezel this is a proper gmt we have a 24 click bi-directional bezel with that stunning Cerachrom, they call it, insert. I'll pop in some macro of the insert. It really is a thing of beauty. I love how it tonally matches the, the rose gold that they use here as well. Some people have complained about how it doesn't quite split the 18 as you would like it to. It certainly splits the six down the middle, but it looks a little bit awkward at the 18, but that's how they've balanced out the numerals. So I'm not gonna complain about that today personally. Case finishing is super sharp, high polish on the side and brush on the lugs and check out the finish of that bezel. Again, very, very nice indeed. 18 karat rose gold crown and bezel and all of those links and all the way through the clasp here as well. So we obviously have solid links, solid end links, there are screw links. Now the clasp, it's not the full glide lock that you get with the sub, but you do get the easy link flip flop system here. So you get about five mil of adjustment either side. Hey, it's not too bad. I can understand why they haven't put the, the full Submariner clasp on here because it is a little bit chunky. It would probably come out to that far and they've kept it nice and neat on this model. Zoomed in on the dial and it all looks rather familiar, doesn't it? Though I must admit that I have seen this far more often on Rolex homages than on the real thing, but there you are. Classic layout, the triangle at 12, the batons at six and nine and circular indexes everywhere else. High gloss black dial with the Rolex Oyster Perpetual and the Rolex Coronet printed above the pinion. GMT Master II also in a kind of rose gold colored font. Superlative chronometer, officially certified and then Swiss made underneath the index at six. Now, hands and indexes are made of rose gold. They're white gold on the other models. These will not tarnish, these will not age, meaning that this watch will look fantastic in 20 or 30 years time, which I guess does in some way justify the price if you look at it as a lifer. There's also plenty of loom on the hands and the indexes. Rolex now uses their own proprietary chromalite loom. They upgraded, in inverted commas, from Superluminova a couple of years ago. It's got that same ice white blue glue low as BGW9, but is reputed to last twice as long. Certainly no issues with this one, but I've had a Rolex in every single episode of Loom Wars that I've done, that being five to date, and it's only one once. So maybe it is one of these things you have to come back after seven or eight hours to compare it and really get the benefit from it, but no complaints about the Loom on this one, certainly. Let's talk movement, and let's do so today without the constant ticking from the Weishi 1000. That's a bit of a relief. This one contains the Rolex in-house caliber 3285, a relatively new movement from Rolex. They debuted the movement at the same time as they debuted this watch in Baselworld 2018. So it's only been in circulation for the last two and a half years in the latest generation GMTs, the Pepsi, the Bat Person, and the Rose Gold, and this two-tone. 31 dual hacking and hand winding, bi-directional winding automatic, running at 28,800 vibrations per hour. As you can see there, four hertz. The big upgrade, 
upgrade from the previous generation was an increase in power reserve up to 70 hours. So from roughly two days to roughly three days of power reserve. With this one, you get all of the usual Rolex in-house goodies. You get a paramagnetic oscillator, the Paraflex shock system, and the blue Parachrome anti-magnetic hairspring. Rolex advertised their watches at being cased as plus or minus two seconds per day, hence the words superlative chronometer on the dial. This one on the way she running a little bit outside of those specs. It's still within cost parameters, but not quite the claimed specs that Rolex offers. Let's get it on wrist and it looks pretty sensational. If I'm being honest, these watches wear fabulously. I've got a seven inch wrist and this is pretty much optimum for me. The rose gold will scuff and scratch, but hey, if you've got 20 grand to drop on one of these, then frankly, who cares? It looks beautiful. And that's the overhead shot. Legibility is excellent, thanks to the big newer maxi style indexes. Hands fit nicely, all well proportioned. It just looks amazing. And that's no different outside either. Apart from the lack of anti-reflective undercoating, I'm just not sure why Rolex insists on doing that. They don't do it on some of their other watches. You get AR with Datejust and so on. But these, in inverted commas, sports models, they insist on not putting AR on there. Never mind, it just comes with the territory, I guess. On wrist, no curvature to that case, but the lug to lug is relatively compact. It just wears beautifully. All right, enough ooing and eyeing then. What am I going to complain about? What are my moans and niggles with this one? And which are the carryovers from my review of the Bat Person earlier on this year? Well, one thing I have noticed with this one is there's a noticeable pit of rattle at the bracelet end links. Both sides, I mean, that's not particularly impressive for a watch at this price. Can't remember if that was the same with the Jubilee, but certainly there's a little bit more than I would like for the money there, that's for sure. One carryover complaint involves the bezel action. No problem left or right, all nice and precise, nice and smooth, but there is a noticeable shake back and forth, which I have rarely seen on a watch costing more than $100, certainly not on a watch costing $20,000, and yet it was present on the bat person that I reviewed earlier this year, so that's two out of two GMT Master 2s. Very surprising at this price as is the noise emanating from this new 3285 caliber. Regular longtime viewers of the channel may remember these guys, they are the kittens of rotor noise doom. I bring them out when I'm complaining about the noise coming from a watch, usually with a Miyota 8000 series movement costing $20 in the back. Not one of these things, but there you are. I'll pop up the kittens and I'll move the watch closer to the microphone and I'll give it a good shake back and forth. See if you can hear it as well. Now for a bit of context, this $175 Kronos I've got in for review has an NH35 and this is how it sounds at the same levels. Much noisier, obviously. However, this is my Omega Seamaster Aquaterra, a watch costing a third of the price of the Rolex. This is how it sounds at the same levels. Yes, the Omega makes no noise at all. If I'm spending 20 grand on a watch, I don't want to hear the movement. That does not scream luxury to me. And my final complaint, I'm sure you've noticed it already, the bezel insert and chapter ring, the Rehot chapter ring, don't line up. Look at that. If this was a Seiko, everybody would be going, oh, it's a Seiko, they're all like that. But this isn't a Seiko. It's a bloody Rolex. I repeat again, this is not a fake watch. I am 100% certain that this is a genuine Rolex. That is unacceptable. Look at the Rolex photo from their marketing bump that I showed you earlier on. This is from their website. It lines up beautifully. Look at it again on this. It doesn't line up. So a $20,000 watch that if you can indeed get your hands on one, you can sell for a profit the next day. But a $20,000 watch that has a number of unbecoming quality control issues that you just shouldn't expect to see on a watch at this price. But I've looked at a number of these and I'm beginning to expect Rolex quality control issues. I think they've got lazy. They know that they can sell these watches without batting an eyelid. So why bother making sure that the Rehoke lines up properly? Just pump it out. Somebody will buy it without complaint anyway. And as long as there is such a hype around this brand, as long as people are buying these things without complaint, then that situation is likely to continue. So to ask the question for a third time, is it worth $20,000? Well, no, I don't think so. Not with these issues. At what price do these issues become all right? 10 grand? 
really? Five grand? Would you not be upset if your $5,000 watch had a misaligned chapter ring? It's a 10 grand watch at best, with at least 10 grand's worth of marketing and hype and advertising surrounding it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in a future video.